Hello, Fun Nation, and welcome back to the Michigan State Championship. Here with me, I got Team 15104, the Static Eagles, out of Heartland, Michigan, the top OPR team at the State Championship event. And wow, their robot is fast and slick. Lots of engineering things to discuss here. Really effective intake indexer and a really consistent shooter as well. Here with me to talk about it, we have Julia, Ben, William, Matthias, Gabe, and Lucas. Let's find out so much more on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new 6mm hex shaft and motor options, and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. All right, Julia, why don't you get us started? Let's talk about your chassis. How are you guys driving so well? Yeah, so this is our chassis. Uh, we use the Swift McKenna wheels. Uh, we chose to, um, to use the Swift wheels because it has an attached motor, so it'll be easier to have more space for our indexer inside the robot. We originally had a sizing constraint, so that's why we transitioned to Swift. Uh, surprisingly, Swift um, has a lot of good traction. We were able to push around other robots for defense, and they've been working really well this season. And as you can see, our robot is also in the shape of a rectangle. It's 17 by 14 inches long for hopefully a, an alliance part to maybe go up, uh, go above us in endgame. Very interesting, thank you, Julia. Um, I'm curious as well, it looks like you have some odometry wheels there. Can you tell me a little bit more how your team is using that? Yeah, so here we use our odometry wheels to kind of sense where we are on the field for like when we're um, aiming at the at the April tag for shooting. So we know where we are in the field to know that we can shoot into the goal effectively and efficiently. Really cool, thank you, Julia. We'll move over now, um, to talk a little bit more about the intake, Ben. Can you tell me about some of the, maybe the iteration you guys have gone through to make this effective design? Yeah, so, this is a FRC style intake that uses a gobiddle tube right here that has many layers of grip tape on it that sucks them in and then it goes to our kicker wheel back here using surgical tubes that brings them into the intake. And we have TPU printed screens right here that pop it up and then so whenever we intake balls, this pops up and traps them in there. So you can see this right here, it's going to pop up and then fall back down. It goes right into our index. Just like that. So can you tell me some of the, maybe the changes that you guys went through? It seems to be a pretty robust design. How is yeah. it kind of took in different forms throughout the season? So originally we didn't have any of these TPU screens on there. So it was a lot less effective about keeping them in here. So we added those so that it's like a lot more bouncy and it helps them stay in there and, and take a lot faster as well. Really cool. We also thing. added a faster motor from our, from our first tournaments. So that right here, this is a 1620 RPM motor from GoBuilda that we use for our intake. And that way it's a lot faster than it was before, so it takes some faster well. Awesome, thank you, Ben, I appreciate it. Lots of thought has clearly gone into what is an effective design. And now I, I start see starting in here, we have a spin deck, sir. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, William? How, how has that gone on for your team? Yeah, so our indexer starts out receiving balls from the ingest. You can see we have these labeled compartments, like this one's B, and that corresponds to these dual color sensors. And that tells us, oh, we have a, purple ball in this slot B, we want to rotate that to our elevator. And that's how we sold. If we lift up the bot, you can see that we drive this using a servo and a belt. And the tension on this is really well, so it can rotate pretty efficiently. We've also done a lot of testing with the, um, the shape of these holes. And we found that we like to have them a little bit deeper and differently shaped. So the balance of the ball staying in and getting pushed around is just right. Also part of our indexer is our elevator. This is a link and lever mechanism. So you can see if I reach in here, I can lift that ball all the way up to the flywheel. It rotates 60 degrees and we rotate using an arc but because this translates into linear motion, it goes very fast. And um, yeah, that's pretty much our indexing. 
So it's an impressively compact design. I'm curious, was this kind of the first thought you guys came up when you were designing your robot? Or what? how did you guys land on this indexing design? So we originally wanted to have this, we call it the Darth Vader helmet design. And it would have three individual flippers to sort. As you can see, it's very tall. And we figured that packaging this would be a nightmare. So we decided to go with a spindexer. And what's great about our spindexer is that it can intake all the balls at once and not have to spin, meaning it's very efficient with the ingest. Really cool, thank you so much. And uh, Matthias, can you tell us a little bit more about the shooting design that you guys have? Okay, it's so our turret is a center bearing style with a 435 RPM motor spinning this turret at two rotations per second. So can you tell me a little bit more, maybe what's gone into that? Why did you guys feel like the turret was a need for your guys' robot? So we were going between a swerve and a turret and we found out that a turret was a lot more uh, fast and a lot more reliable. And then what about, I see some like grip, grip tape here uh, going into your hood. Um, and then some of the other like smaller things. What was maybe some of the challenges you guys felt so, uh, with this design? We were uh, finding out if we wanted backspin and then we found out that we needed it and then we put added a hood. So yeah. Awesome, thanks so much. Now going over to Gabe, you had some other stuff with the shooter you wanted to talk about. Tell us a little bit more what's gone into that with the, for the so, Static Eagles. So for our shooter, we chose a vertical style flywheel. But in that, we have a dual motor system on the back. So these two motors will spin our 4 and 35 a line wheel in the front, which we tested a bunch of different wheels overall. We landed on a the these kind as they were the most consistent in the shooting. So when we tested the wheels, we would put them onto our mock-up shooter and we would launch them and we'd take a slow-mo video to find out where they were landing and we'd see where the, what balls were landing in the same spot the most. And these came up on top. We also have a 50 degree hood angle. So instead of lobbing it up and over into the goal, it will kind of hit the back and then lose all of its spin and drop down, making it a lot more consistent. It's really smart. Clearly a lot of prototyping went into that. And obviously you guys have a strong control system beyond that too. I'd love to learn more, Lucas, about some of the controls that you guys have done, some of the sensing. Take us through that. All right, well, the starting point is with our indexer. So the dual color sensors allow us to read color. Then we have to move on to our limelight, which can read the obelisk at the beginning of auto and reset our position in teleop. Then we'll move on to our servo, which is our elevator. It flicks up the ball. Then we can move on to our turret. So in our control system, we have a point set. We have a point set in each of our goals, red or blue. And our two wheel odometry which checks the location on the field. We find the difference between the two, and that's where we aim our turret. Then we'll go on to our shooter. Our shooter finds, a, so we have a table. It fills in the blanks between each point, And we have a certain RPM for each point. So when we fill in the table, we'll call it. And once we get it, we'll change the speed according to how far away from the goal we are. That's a really smart way to do it. I also see you have like an LED indicator here. What is that serving for the Static Eagles? All right, so the LED indicator, it indicates how spun off our shooter is. Okay. If it's spun off all the way, it'll turn green. If it's not there yet, it's purple. It's a little indicator for drivers to know when to shoot. Really cool. Well, Static Eagles, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Really incredible robot. Can't wait to see you guys perform here at the state championship and then hopefully the world championship as well. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is James for the Fun Robotics Network, signing out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new 6mm hex shaft and motor options, and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com robots.